Hey guys, it's Dan, back with another beat showcase. This time I'm breaking down another beat. And this beat is different again. This is a, a quieter, kind of more simplistic beat. And the beat is called Appetite. And uh, it was actually inspired by Wale's track, Ambition. Uh, the track he has with uh, Meek Mill and Rick Ross. It was actually kind of inspired by that. But uh, I feel like it has a Kid Cudi kind of vibe to it too. Like a Wale Kid Cudi kind of vibe. There's kind of a loneliness to the song. But uh, it's got a nice kind of uh, effects in it. Uh, the melodies are kind of quiet. There isn't really crazy melodies. It's, it's, it's a quiet kind of track. And it, the kind of instrumentation takes over a lot more in this. And the drums are kind of secondary in this. It's just the way I structured the beat and the way I took inspiration from the ambition Wale by uh, the instrumental. Um, I think it's by T minus T minus producers. I think uh, if I didn't uh, give out to me in the comments, um, I'm pretty sure it is. But uh, that was the kind of track that I was looking for. This kind of Kid Cudi kind of has kind of uh, songs about loneliness and kind of sadness and stuff like that. And uh, I kind of got that vibe from this. But uh, again, it was just a couple of elements that made me want to make the beat. And then I, once I knew I had a few elements in it, I could, I could figure out what I actually wanted to do with it. It's at a different tempo than I'm usually comfortable with. Normally, really don't make beats with uh, 61 temp BPM. Um, I think uh, I had a loop. I had a, a sound loop in in that I got from a pack somewhere that kind of gave me inspiration for the drums in this but I find it difficult to sample sometimes and I can't bend the sample to where I want to actually take the song so I kind of changed it up a little bit I do have some loops in there and some uh, kind of smaller sounds and I'll show you each I'll show every sound in it like so I'll go through this the song structure as normal uh, I do have some loops in there just to kind of make the, the, the song process quicker and uh, speed me up when I'm making beats because I think I take too long making them and uh, I'll go through each individual elements. Now it is a very simple beat but uh, here is the first three, uh, the intro, the first three sections of the intro. So we'll just, yeah, so I can see everything and I'll just move, move the mixer window out of the way. One second. Uh, I'll just move this out of the way as well. It's not moving for me. I'll just leave it there for a moment. Okay, and we'll just listen to what the elements of the intro sound like. And you can hear where I get the, the Wale or the kind of the Kid Cudi kind of vibe to it. Um, but uh, you can hear these kind of sounds in their songs a lot. So it kind of started with this kind of me this melody. So it's like a little bell kind of sound, but it sounds kind of weird, a weird kind of tuning. Um, I did cut some sound, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one now. Oh, my bad. I did cut out a load of kind of sounds out of this because it's kind of a dirty kind of scent and uh, it can really interfere with all the other elements in the song. It's in massive, it's a, set, a scent called Calling My Earth. And I just kind of made this little melody And you can hear that kind of melody in a lot of Kid Cudi's songs. Even Wale as well, a little bit in Wale's stuff as well. And then I kind of bring in this kind of sound here. It's kind of, um, it's kind of, it's hard to describe. It's kind of like a, a bass kind of synth, but it's a weird kind of pad synth. And I cut off some lows, cut off some of the highs. 
scooped out some sounds I didn't like. I want to let it play. Oh, bring that back again. And they kind of create that haunting vibe in it. And, and that bass synth just follows the notes. They're probably just chopped a bit more in that one. Yeah, you can see that I just chopped up the notes to make it the arc kind of make a melody, more of a sense in the calling my heart. And the des desert kind of tone is just kind of playing one note. So it's kind of acting like a little bit like my bass in this section because there's nothing here. There's no bass in this section here. And uh, I bring in another kind of section here as well. And this is playing this. <laughs> and when you hear that, it sounds like this animalistic scream or something like that. It's just a sound that I found in Massive and it tweaked it a bit, cut off a lot of lows, boosted it to make it peak at certain areas to get cut through the mix but all together it has this beautiful haunting sound and you get the drift of that in there and we'll just kind of move on now and then i kind of bring in some perks and basically i played around with this of for a good while now because it's just a it's actually just a loop it's just a sound loop on its own or it's just a one sound but I kind of just play around with it with the, the delay and I put so many different delays on these three different snares they're all the snare same snare sound but each sound has its own kind of section So you can hear that snare and then another snare comes in. And basically all I did was really just play around with the delay in Logic and uh, just play around with it and uh, came up with that kind of sound and, and it's in the delay designer. And I just kept looking until I found delays that I actually enjoyed. It's the last snare as well. So basically these snares here are only acting as effects really for me. And that's, that's all they're really doing there. So we'll just come back up here a bit. And then I kind of bring in a kick here. And I have two different kicks here. So this one's playing this section. And it's playing just a basic kind of kick pattern. It's just kind of following the beat. There's nothing over excitingly about it. And it just kind of sounds quiet, it sounds a bit reserved. There's nothing really kind of coming out through it yet. Uh, I did bring in this kind of vocal sample here and now. This is where it gets a bit tricky here and now. This is where I started to tinker with the mix. I found this sample, I'll just play it on its own. And we'll just listen. And this was just a sample that I found in a pack somewhere and I just cut it up and kind of reversed it and then I kind of put the analyzer or the EQ on it and just cut all the lows out because these kind of old samples can be kind of dirty and kind of ruin your mix. So it's a very kind of mid kind of sound in it and that kind of plays well with all the other sounds. And it's just kind of acting like a metronome in the background. 
Next, another sample comes in. And this doesn't really sound like much. It just really doesn't sound like much, that, that sample there. Uh, I kind of did do an EQ on it again. But when you bring it in with the other sample, it kind of plays off the beat and the drums. And it just kind of gives, it's kind of, instead of using pads, I'm kind of using samples. Or instead of using instruments, I'm using samples to give me my effects. I noticed with Drake's music, Cuddy's music, a lot of the beats today now are using samples as effects in the background. Instead of using a pad, they might just cut up a vocal or an old song and use it as an effect in the back instead of putting in loads of melodies and making the song more difficult to mix. And it just, it, it, if, you have to, if I have to be honest, it kind of sounds just a bit boring there. But when you bring in the other elements of the song, it just, you can hear the change on the And then I have a small change up here. I found this loop of a hi-hat. It was just easier to use. Uh, I, I felt it went well with the mix. And I was kind of experimenting when I was making this beat. I wasn't really going out of my way to actually make a beat. It was just, I loved those haunting sounds in it. I just really, I said I have to make something with like this. And that kind of hi-hat did well. It's kind of just kind of, it's like a 30 second step kind of hi-hat and it kind of just, it plays really quickly. It's kind of, it's kind of really weird the way it fits in with this beat because it's such a slow beat and it's just weird elements kind of conflicting but yet gelling together as well. It's, it's not something that I thought I was going to put into a track like this. If I, to be honest, when I started this beat, I had a loop, I can't remember what I did with it again, but it was a loop, and I was just cutting it up, playing away with it, but I eventually deleted it, and I just had to make my own drums, because I couldn't bend the sample to the way that I wanted it to sound with the, the instrumentation that I wanted to keep. So, it was kind of a bit of production discipline there kicking in, where I knew something wasn't working, and I had to change it up, so... I left the drums out in this section and then and I left it quiet. It's kind of a storytelling beat. It's kind of like some someone pouring their heart out and someone like Cuddy would do something like that or a Wale would say something like that. There's a little production trick there. I added my uh, main one of my main snares there just to give it a little boost to give let you know that I'm coming into the the, the hook. So basically, I cut out those uh, main kind of riffs that are in the track. I cut them out of this last section. And uh, they just kind of cut out for a second, and then I kind of just let these snares kind of play the last notes. Sorry, one second. So the last note, so you can kind of hear it. And you just hear an extra snare hit there, so it just kind of, it's like the more proper snare kicks in then. And um, I just kind of hit you with the chorus then. And basically it's the same elements again, except I have a bass line, I have an 808 bass line coming in. I have the hi-hats playing all the time then in that section. So it's the same hi-hat loop, but I have them playing throughout with the drums. So we'll kind of just go through the drums. I'll actually do the 808s first. So the 808 bass line just basically follows the, the same uh, chords of the main song. So this is a really heavily compressed 808 kick. And 
you can see that I've cut out I've cut out some kind of sounds here. I've cut out the I've cut out the low end because or the high end, sorry, because I just don't need that sound. I've cut out a little bit of the low end, just a little bit, and I've cut a little bit where I know where the kick is just gonna bump as well. So you can still kind of hear the kick in that 808, but when you hear it with the other one, it just matches so much better. So we'll just kind of see that kick in action with that 808. And it's just following the song. Uh, that kick here is much stronger than that one, so the velocities are much higher and the volume of the kick is much higher in the chorus because I just didn't I wanted the, the verse of that song to be quiet I didn't want it to be like aggressive like the the the, the, the hook is and I just brought in some regular snares then so some regular snares come in see that happening now and um, just where I am now oh yeah I've done the 808 and then you just bring I brought in the, the oh sorry I know what I'm saying yeah I brought in this snare it's just a, a sample and I just left the sound in because I just didn't want to tinker with it that much I liked sometimes when you pick the sounds that you want you don't have to tinker with them as much and you can see that I just rolled off some of the, the, the high uh, the low end because I just didn't need it but that's I think this snare here just makes the the hook a lot better. So when you hear the drums all together. See that's kind of my reverb snare that kind of gives it the atmosphere. And these are these two snares really here just kind of beef up that snare. So it just gives it an extra because I really like a good hard kick and a really snappy snare. So the, the rapper can find the beat and stay on beat. And then I kind of just play around with these kind of ones that I had in the first. They come in and out and, and different sections and they just kind of add kind of the effects of the song. So like instead of using synths as effects, I'm basically using snares as effects. Basically, right now it's like it's kind of like the the main crux of the song, this the hook of it. But it, it's weird because the the verse sounds this kind of lonely, kind of old school hip hop kind of track, and uh, with lonely kind of kind of sounds. Whereas this kind of sounds like a modern kind of hip hop kind of a lot of heavy eight oh eight heavy kicks, and it's kind of aggressive for what kind of it's kind of weird kind of sounds. To make this kind of song because it's kind of aggressive like you could have pictured this on a, uh, a more kind of aggressive uh, beat and the snares to me they kind of act like a metronome in the background is not just a, as effects but they kind of have that kind of cool kind of sound that gives it a, a busyness to the song Sometimes when I make a simple drum loop, uh, it's good to find sounds that are going to make it sound busy and kind of make the drums sound a little bit more interesting. So we'll just kind of bring in the vocal samples just to hear what they sound like. Sorry, no, I'll just show you these vocal samples. These are the same ones that were in the verse, they just come in and out in different sections. This one as well, so this comes in with the change up. So then when you hear the whole song together, it just sounds like this.
hook. And just to make sure that I show you that, there's two like little sounds that I have here. Yeah, and they just kind of give that another effect. I did cut off the last bit as well at the end. And it just gives another effect there at the end. And it's just another effect there at the end. And what I just did with this section here is I just kind of took out the, the, the kind of drums here at this section. And just left the, the, the melody and the, the song finish out without any kind of drums. And it's kind of the same throughout the whole song. It's then it just kind of goes verse, chorus, verse, and you could hear the change-ups within the song. And I didn't really change it after that. I thought it was kind of just kind of one of those beats that kind of has that kind of vibe. Uh, didn't really need a bridge or anything like that. And that's just the way I wanted to create that beat. I just kind of, it's kind of just like more, more about what the rapper has to tell in the song than what, um, what kind of production changes I have. It's like, more for a rapper than me if i have to be honest and uh, so the rap artists can like really kind of tell their story and uh, kind of get something off their chest it's kind of a, a really storyteller beat a modern storyteller beat and uh, i just really think it's got beautiful haunting sounds in it and it's kind of simple but uh, sometimes simple is sounds a lot better than more complicated things I'm just gonna play you out at the end there guys that that'll be the end of the video don't forget to like and subscribe if there's anything in the video that I didn't share properly if I didn't go through anything um, just give me a shout and I can I can show you more I don't mind making more videos uh, you can see anything that's there it's like some low EQ uh, kind of did some parallel compression here and there the drums would be parallel processed um, added some kind of compression on, on them. Uh, also, I kind of EQ'd everything, made sure everything was good. And um, obviously I have like VCA faders there to help me control the mix. Uh, there's a lot of reverb in the song. A lot of the time it's Space Diviner, Designer and I used Prince Hall 1 kind of reverb in this one. And I used the snare chamber for my snares and just kind of tinkering with different sounds and that's really it with the mix it's not really something crazy it just took time to tweak everything that's all it really was uh, if i haven't covered something leave it in the comments uh, if you have any questions don't forget to ask you guys take care guys thank you